Hello everyone and yes welcome to today's session. In this class we will be discussing something very interesting. So I hope you all are ready to have some amazing learning, right? So let's get started quickly, but before we begin, I hope that you all are still thinking about who am I, right? So to answer that, yes, here it's me and my name is Zufa Shayan. And here I am the master teacher in Oda class. You can see the details about me as well. So with that, let us quickly start our learning process. But first of all, do let me tell you something which is very, very interesting. I hope that you all are excited, isn't it? Because everyone wants to learn something which is extremely interesting. So this is what we are going to do in this session right now. All right, so let's get started. What do you see? Come on, tell me quickly. Like, what do you see? Okay, so you can see a lot of living things in here, right? To start with, at the bottom, what is there? We have the primary producers, right? The primary producers. And yes, of course, they are the plants. And we know that plants are called primary producers because they can produce their own food. But can you tell me what is that process by which plants make their own food? Can you tell me the name of that process? Yes, you all are right. The name of that process is photosynthesis. Very good. So these primary producers, they will be consumed by the primary consumers. Okay, so these group of animals, they will be waiting to feed on these plants. Okay, that's fine. But are they safe themselves? Are the primary consumers safe? Well, clearly no, right? Because we have a group of animals who are secondary consumers and who are waiting to feed on the primary consumers, right? So here we see that none of the living organisms are safe. And we know who is going to eat whom, right? And as we know that all living things die one day, right? Be it the animals or the plants. So if living organisms die, their bodies are broken down by these group of organisms, which are called decomposers. But all this, the complete flow, it makes the food chain. And this is something quite predictable, isn't it? Who is going to eat whom? That is quite predictable. But wait, let me share with you a very interesting short story. So there is an insect, okay? And we all know that insects are very fond of the plants. They get attracted towards the plants. So this insect wanted to rest and this insect landed on the plant, feeling that I will be safe here. But instead what happened? The plant itself consumed the insect. Now, this is something very unpredictable, isn't it? So let me tell you something about the unpredictable predators. So here we are going to talk about the insectivorous plants. Okay, we will have a detailed discussion about it. Let us quickly have a look at the examples. Being the pitcher plant and here is Venus flytrap. So let us go ahead and discuss about this. But the question is that why do these plants feed on the insects? Because what do we know about plants? We know that plants make their own food, right? By the process of photosynthesis. Then why at all there's a group of plant who is feeding on the insect? Well, to tell you, the answer is very simple. These insectivorous plants, they grow on such type of soil which is not having the right amount of nutrients. So to fulfill on their nutrient requirements, they have to feed on the insects. Okay, so that's the reason why they are feeding on the insect. Now, let us quickly have a look at the first example, which is the pitcher plant. Okay, so you can see here that's the pitcher plant. 
right now here we are talking about the insectivorous plants we are talking about the pitcher plant but why at all are they called as the pitcher plant any idea about it so let's have a look over here right they are called as the pitcher plant because if you observe the shape of this right the pitcher in very simple english right what it means it means a jug so the shape of this pitcher plant resembles a jug that is the reason why they have got their name it's very simple so let's go ahead and let us see what actually happens inside the pitcher plant we all can see that there's an insect right so insect gets trapped inside the lid of the pitcher plant and as soon as the insect is going to touch the lid what will happen the lid is going to close okay so when the lid closes the insect cannot come out now it's trapped inside okay and you can see a liquid isn't it the liquid inside this pitcher so this is having some digestive enzymes some chemicals now with the use of these chemicals the pitcher plant is going to digest its prey okay so moving ahead you can see the example here in detail so there are insects trapped inside the liquid of this pitcher plant and this process of digestion is very slow it doesn't happen instantly okay now let's go ahead and check about the other type of insectivorous plant that is venus fly trap okay so what is so interesting about this venus fly trap let us have a look at this also so we can see that yes of course it's the modified leaf and it is having kind of two lobes right with all those pointed structures coming out of it yes all these so what happens they are going to close in they're going to fit into each other and the prey is there inside so how this works let us quickly have a look at this as well so we can see something okay what is going to happen to this honey bee Can you tell me what is going to happen to this honey bee? Okay, it's trapped inside as we can clearly see, right? So this insect as soon as it comes in contact with the surface of the Venus flytrap, they're going to close, right? They're going to close making sure that the insect is properly fitting inside, right? It's going to have a proper hold on the insect and only then the process of digestion will begin okay so with this i have a question that how do they digest their prey how is venus fly trap digesting its prey so let's come back to what we were discussing right here we can see two lobes this being the first one and here is the second one so until and unless they don't close in properly the process of digestion will not begin and as soon as they are having a proper grip the chemical for digestion will be released okay so that is how they are going to digest their prey now here is one very interesting example of the insectivorous plants that comes in the form of sundew so if we observe this plant what we can see that the leaves are having a lot of these pointed hair like structures coming out of them right and if you notice the endings are little swelled up right and these endings they are highly sticky very very sticky okay which ensures that once the insect come in contact they are not going to escape okay So here let's go ahead and let's see about the sundew plant. So what happens here you can see the leaves the modified leaves they are going to roll up as soon as they get one insect attached 
these leaves they are going to fold up and have a proper grip on the insect making sure that they are not going anywhere and only then the process of digestion will begin okay that's wonderful now here i have a question for you what if what if you put your hands in between the lobes of the venus flytrap what do you think is going to happen to you okay well nothing to worry about here specifically as i told you that until and unless the flaps don't close in properly the digestive chemicals will not be released and yes as we can see our fingers are too big to fit in properly right so we are still safe but yes we need to be very careful with these pointed things this may cause a lot of damage to us right so as i told you that you will still be safe because the first thing is making sure that the lid is closed properly now with this if you want to learn more interesting things yes this is the place where you can come what's that place the oda class app so how are you going to reach here that's very easy you can download oda class app from play store so once you download it you have the chance of also getting some coins when you attend the classes in oda class you will also be getting something in return now that is something very interesting isn't it you're not only just learning something but in return you will be getting coin rewards that is good so let's quickly understand you can see for the app itself in the play store the description box is having all the details you can check it there also and this is how it is going to look like when you enter into the oda class app and here as i told you that you will be getting some coin rewards so what are you going to do with all those coin rewards in oda class we have oda mall and there we have lots of amazing gifts waiting for you so you come to the classes you collect the coins and then exchange your coins for any gift that you want for yourself okay so complete your enrollment now for any details you can always check the description box it is having the complete details so yes do like and do share thank you so much everyone that's it for today's learning take care and bye bye